Welcome to Biodiesel Magazine's Top Stories for Late August. I'm your host, Jill Nelson. On August 9th, the U.S. EPA granted 31 new retroactive small refinery exemptions for 2018, a move that riled the renewable fuels industries. The National Biodiesel Board called the decision a fundamental failure to uphold the renewable fuel standard and said the demand destruction disproportionately falls on the biodiesel industry. In an opinion piece, Donnell Rehagen, CEO of NBB, said President Trump vowed to protect and defend American farmers, but his actions will put the biodiesel producers those same farmers depend on for their market out of business. Furthermore, Rehagen said EPA's new round of unwarranted RFS exemptions have destroyed jobs and a valuable marketplace for hardworking Americans, including those patriotic soybean farmers who Trump has called on to be his willing allies in the trade dispute with China. Rehagen closes his article by stating that if this is how EPA Administrator Wheeler treats the president's allies, then he would hate to see how Wheeler treats Trump's enemies. Production of hydro-treated vegetable oil in the European Union has picked up significant pace since 2012. HVO output in the EU last year is estimated at 740 million gallons, according to Germany's UFOP, and is expected to rise slightly to nearly 793 million gallons this year. Planned HVO production in France and Italy is expected to boost overall EU production of HVO to nearly 1.2 billion gallons as soon as next year. UFOP states that HVO production in Europe is on the rise because of indirect land use change regulation introduced in 2015 permits that biofuels from waste can be counted double. At the same time, pressure on prices has increased in the international vegetable oil market. HVO plants can use a wide range of feedstocks, including byproducts of different industrial processes, such as palm fatty acid distillate. In view of these feedstock options, UFOP has urged the EU to step up certification and documentation requirements. California regulators have finally approved storage of B20 in underground storage tanks after a 10-year effort on behalf of the National Biodiesel Board, the California Advanced Biofuels Alliance, and member companies. Most diesel fuel is stored in underground storage tanks, particularly at retail locations. Although biodiesel biodegrades in water as fast as sugar, regulators had concerns that any degradation of underground storage tank materials could allow diesel fuel to compromise the water supply. The California State Water Resources Control Board amended the state's regulations August 6. It was the last state to accept storage of B20 in underground fuel systems. The regulation will go into effect October 1st. To view these stories in their entirety or for more news, features, or data on the most respected and viewed biodiesel site in the world, visit biodieselmagazine.com. See you next time.